There were no colleges for women, either co-educational or single sex, in the United States until 20 years after Center was chartered. People who had created Center were in favor of education for their daughters and for women in general. There were academies, and they were sort of high schools with a beginning of a classical curriculum, not quite colleges. They operated in Danville on Main Street or on Lexington Avenue. There were several of them. Um, the most famous person ever to teach at Center College, Lottie Moon, she taught at the Bell Academy, which was at the Baptist Church. Uh, it merged into the various Education for Women institutions, which eventually becomes the Kentucky College for Women. Well, Kentucky College for Women is actually founded in 1854 as the Henderson Female Institute. The Henderson Female Institute uh, was one of the early, fairly early ones, and that started in Danville in 1854. That eventually became Caldwell College and then KCW. During uh, the presidency of John C. Young, who was president 1830 to 1857, several of his daughters actually took classes at Center College and actually completed all the degree requirements. But they were female and so they weren't granted degrees. But that was an early step towards co-education. John C. Young was a Pennsylvanian. He went to Dickinson College and Princeton Seminary. And the college asked Princeton Seminary, who would be good to be a college president? And the person we asked famously said, I know the guy and he is already among you. John C. Young was pastor in Lexington of the Presbyterian Church when he came to be president. In the meantime, relations with Caldwell College grew closer and closer and there was increasing cooperation between the schools and eventually Caldwell became KCW and uh, merged with Center in 1925. The campus itself was located across town uh, on East Main Street where Danville High School is now located. The dining hall was in East Hall, and behind that there was a, a separate building, which was the old gym building, and that's where we had a, a swimming pool and the bowling alley or a tin pin alley down in the basement. And there was a little gym there as well. I think it's a mistake to think of KCW and Center as separate entities since they have been merged for so many years, since 1930. We were very much at KCW a combined campus. We said in the catalog that they were coordinated but not co-educational. And that was treated as a virtue. That would be good for both, but particularly for women, to not actually be in the same place as men. We rode a bus to get to the center campus. The buses ran every hour to pick us up at the dorm and bring us to campus and to bring us back. Well, after breakfast, if you had an early class, you went out to West Hall and got on the, this yellow bus and they brought you all the way over to Old Main. In 1962, when President Spragans merged the two, uh, they built the North Dorms for women they built the earlier Cowan building, the octagonal Cowan, as the combined dining hall for both. And when that was done, the college and the city swapped buildings. I was present in a period of real transition. The move to the main center campus from the KCW dormitory was not repeat not a happy occasion for any of the women. Living in KCW was like living in one great, huge sorority house. The, the film shows us Kentucky College for Women, and the buildings look quite beautiful. It shows us a, a arch and walkway. We see students coming in out of the buildings, which, and those are things I've never seen before. It shows us angles on buildings, and we don't have photographs of those that I know of. So all of that is really a, a kind of treasure. And I think of all of those buildings, only one survives. And it is behind uh, part of the Danville High School and maybe one old building from that entire campus survives to this day. 
the film shows us the buildings in ways that we have not seen before.